Welcome back artistic ladies and gentlemen to another episode in this PTC Geo series. This is gonna be a sort of an extra Meta Monday episode even though it's Tuesday because this is an extra episode. Uh, this is uh, not on my regular upload or recording schedule and that's because in the Meta Monday episode from last week we took a look at a Mega Mewtwo EX variant, a decklist, a darkness variant and I told you that there's actually several different ways you can run a Mega Mewtwo EX deck, a competitive Mega Mewtwo EX deck and I asked you if you want to see some more of these variants to comment down below and one of you did, JNNSK from YouTube, he commented that he would love to see some more Mega Mewtwo EX deck variants and so basically this video is for him. Um, and we are going to take a look at another Mega Mewtwo EX deck and this time it's a little bit of a more classical one uh, since I already discussed Mega Mewtwo in detail in the previous Meta Monday episodes I will link an annotation here on the top of the screen that will take you to that, uh, to that episode if you wanna hear more in detail about what Mega Mewtwo does and what the strategy overall is with Mega Mewtwo EX. Uh, if you want to skip the deck analysis, uh, click the annotation on the top left of the screen right now and that will take you straight to today's battles. So what is different here from uh, the other Mega Mewtwo deck uh, that I made? Uh, first off, there's no darkness Pokemon, we don't have any darkness support and that means we will have to find another way of dealing with Night March because Night March wrecks us uh, because of our psychic weakness. Uh, we are going to go with Seismitoad EX as a counter against Night March decks. Seismitoad EX with the Quaking Punch which hits for 30, that's a knockout on a Joltik and then item locks our opponent and Night March uses a lot of items so if we can item lock uh, Night March in our first turn if we are going second then we stand a chance against it, against playing out the game against them with our EX heavy deck. Um, another, uh, let's say, an another sort of uh, counter could be Deoxys but this is more in the deck uh, for when we are facing Regice uh, for example Regice with the uh, what's it called again I lost the attack name Regice let's let's look him up let's look up uh, Regice here oh that's that's not how you spell Regice my gosh my my typing is terrible today there is resistance blizzard with the resistance blizzard attack because we play a ton of EXs and if we get hit for a resistance blizzard then we cannot damage this regice so we are going to try and get around that by playing the oxys uh, with the overdrive smash hits for 30 and then in the next turn this attack does 60 more damage so first we are hitting for 30 in a turn after that for 90 30 plus 90 that's 120 120 is exactly the amount of hit points from a regice and then a third difference with the darkness uh, variant, the darkness list that I presented to you in last week's episode is the basic Mewtwo EX that I'm running. In the last episode I did not run the damage change Mewtwo EX since our deck didn't contain uh, psychic energies but today we do run psychic energies and we run like six of them six psychic energies plus four dces that means we can include the damage change mutu ex and make use of this awesome attack which uh, switches all damage counter on mutu ex with those on your opponent's active pokemon now if we have evolved into a mega mutu ex we can obviously not use the damage change anymore so we are going to get around that by playing uh, the Shrine of Memories here which allows our evolved Pokemon to use any attacks from its previous evolution meaning that if we have Shrine of Memories in play and if we have three Psychic Energies attached to to Mega Mewtwo EX uh, to Mega Mewtwo EX here we can use the damage change from the basic Mewtwo EX that it evolved from and we can basically switch damage counters or swap damage counters with our opponent's active Pokemon as long as we have uh, at most 200 damage on our Mega Mewtwo EX because 210 would knock it out so then we wouldn't be able to use it anymore uh, we do run one Hoopa EX to get out our Mewtwo and our Seismitoad a little bit easier as well as a Shaman which we can use for setup drawing through our deck. Now one question here is um, 
how how in God's name how we go are we going to attach three energies uh, to our Pokemon three basic energies in this fast format uh, in this fast format that the Pokemon TCG is today and to do that we are going to use some energy acceleration cards uh, basically the Mega Turbo here which allows us to attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your Mega Pokemon and getting those energy cards in the discard pile is not going to be too troublesome even though I do not run a battle compressor since we have for example the ultra ball here which we need to discard two cards with so we might as well discard energies if we have them in our hands and we also run four sycamores uh, which will force us to discard the cards that we have in our hand if we want to play it and that way we will get some energies in the discard pile for sure to use with the mega turbo um, obviously to evolve uh, from our Mewtwo EX into our Mega Mewtwo we will run 3 Mewtwo Spirit Links, then one, mus one Muscle Band to go with the Toad or the Deoxys, one Float Stone to retreat our Pokemon because they are pretty heavy on the retreat cost. Uh, 3 energy for the Toad here and 2 energy for Mega Mewtwo EX, uh, just one for the Deoxys so if we start off with the Deoxys uh, that would be ideal. Uh, because then we have the f um, flexibility of retreating in whichever Pokemon and that we want. Because our Pokemon are so heavy on the retreat, I also run two switches in addition to the Flowstone. One Megaphone to get rid of pesky Fighting Fury Bells and things like that. One Super Rod to get back our Pokemon uh, if, they, if they have been KO'd as well as our Psychic Energies if we really need them back into our deck. For Trainer's Mail, for consistency, one Hex Maniac to deal with Trevenant Break, stuff like that. V Vesper Queen Vile Plume for sure, uh, very annoying, uh, as well as Greninja Break. Uh, two Lysander to stall our opponent while we are setting up uh, Mega Evolving. And two Lysander out easy targets like the Shaman. Um, and in addition to that, so we have a Judge to disrupt our opponent and a Zero Seek to get rid of special energies and tools on our opponent's Pokemon. And that's basically it for the deck. I do have a Skyla to get out our cards like the Stadium or like the uh, Spirit Link a little bit easier. And one Dimension Valley in addition to the Shrine of Memories. You never know when we are in a little bit of a pickle um, with our energies and want to play down a Dimension Valley so that we could use the Psychic Infinity for just uh, a single energy. And that's gonna be it here for the deck analysis. So I think uh, we should go into a tournament, a standard tournament, because this is a standard deck and see if we can pull off a win. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, this deck analysis and if you enjoy the upcoming tournament, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more competitive, silly and fun deck ideas. And I'll be seeing you pretty soon in the battles. Alright, here we go, we are in the standard tournaments lobby, uh, 7 players have joined and I was the 7th one to join, so we are just waiting for the last player, should be here any minute, uh, and I think we are getting just 3 booster packs if we finish first, uh, that's still pretty nice, not as much as the 6 ticket standard tournament, but I will take it, if we can take first here, I'll gladly take it with a Mega Mewtwo EX deck. <laughs> and there we go, I was I was gonna say, I was expecting the 8th player to have joined by now. Uh, there he went, just when I was about to say it. Uh, we are facing Brett, uh, J12 with a water deck. Um, most likely Greninja Break. So we are going to have to dig for our Hex Maniac. Our Hex Maniac is gonna be one of our biggest tools, one of our biggest helps in this matchup, if it is indeed Greninja Break. Um, what else could we kind of use to counter Greninja Break? Toad can come in handy at some point, certainly if my opponent wants to use a Super Rod, if we have knocked out some of his Greninjas or of his um, of his um, Frogadiers with Water Duplicates, that's what I was looking for. Words are escaping me today, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not good because uh, I still have a little bit of a recording session ahead of me here. Uh, we start off with a Shaman, definitely not what we're going to start off with. Uh, we are probably going to dig for a Hoopa with the Ultra Ball. Play down the Hoopa, look for a Mewtwo and a Seismitoad. And I think I want to put the Seismitoad in the active spot and start item locking my opponents. And I definitely want to try and dig for a Hex Maniac as well. So 
we do have the Hoopa in deck. Uh, one Seismitoad, one Mewtwo. Damage change can come in handy a lot here against Greninja as well if we can get that going. Because then we can just damage change uh, the damage counters from the Water Shuriken back onto my opponent if he puts them onto our Mewtwo. But for now we'll go with the Toad and the Mewtwo and then another Shaman we have to find some draw support here. So I kind of want to Sky Return those Shamans back into my hand uh, if I can just so that they are not an easy Water Shuriken target. That's uh, what I'm worried about here. Uh, let's take a look at the trainer's mail. We get a spirit link and a Lysander. And no use for the Lysander right now. We'll go with the spirit link, attach it to the Mewtwo. And then we will attach a DCE to the Toad. And put down another shaming, leaving us with just one more spot to bench something here. Uh, there is a Sycamore and two VS Seekers. Oh no. We will have to get rid of two VS Seekers here. Yeah, I want to dig through my deck. Oh, that's not very good. So that means we can use the Hex Maniac two times less than if we would have been able to keep those VS Seekers. There is a Skyla. We can Skyla for the Hex Maniac if we need to. Uh, another Spirit Link. I might as well put down this Mewtwo. I'm going to do it. I'm going to attach and uh, keep the Spirit Link in hand if we see a Startling Megaphone from my opponent. In the next turn, I'm actually going to Skyla for... Um, I'm going to Skyla for a, a Float Stone. And then I'm going to... In the turn after that, gonna use the judge, I think. Oh, a Palkia. So this is not a pure Greninja break deck then. I'm a little less worried now. I was kind of worried. I'm not, go I'm not gonna lie. Um, Greninja break is a very good deck. But uh, with this Palkia in there, I'm starting to think my opponent is still trying to build his Greninja break deck. So we might stand a little bit of a better of a chance here. And he decides to attach to the Palkia, so we are going to definitely going to go for the item lock with the Toad. Uh, I should have looked before if I had the Floatstone in deck. I didn't really do that. But at least we should have a switch if we don't have the Floatstone. There is a Floatstone. So I am going to Floatstone onto the Shaman. Maybe I should have gone for a switch, actually. Because now we cannot put the Floatstone on the Hoopa. But I could always Sky Return the Shaman as well if I need to want... Or if I want to get that Flowstone back into my hand. We will attach a Muscle Band. And then we will... Huh. So we have one Mega Mewtwo in the discard pile. Uh, do I want to get one out with this Ultra Ball? Maybe. Um, I'll wait a turn. I will wait one turn. And we will Quaking Punch. Item lock my opponent. With the Toad. Uh, this Mewtwo EX... Or our Mega Mewtwo EX is gonna come in handy against Palkia EX to deal a ton of damage to it. That's where Mewtwo shines against EXs that need a lot of energy. Or generally against any card that needs a lot of energy. But EXs particularly because, because of their high hit points. Mega Mewtwo EX has no trouble uh, reaching the amount of hit points. Um, the amount of damage counters needed to knock out EXs with uh, high hit points, high health. Alright, we top the key switch. Uh, I'm gonna discard one Spirit Link and the Startling Megaphone. I don't think we have any use for those at the moment. And certainly not for another Spirit Link. I'll get out a Mega Mewtwo. Mega Evolve, one of our Mewtwo's on the bench. And we have another Mega Mewtwo in deck, so we can evolve the other one on our bench as well. Then we will judge our opponent. And see if we can find an energy attachment for our Mewtwo. <laughs> what the heck is that? We top deck four energies, three DCEs, and uh, just a Psychic one. I'm not complaining here because with these DCEs, it will be really easy to knock out uh, that Palkia. Wow, that's that's pretty insane. So we take the first prize of the game here with our Toad, uh, continuing the lock. As soon as the Mega Mewtwo is sufficiently powered up, I might actually decide to retreat, uh, pay the retreat cost even, uh, on the Toad. If we cannot find a switch. 
And there is a Sphere, yeah, this is definitely definitely not your usual Greninja break deck. My opponent is definitely still building his deck. So, uh, kind of feel bad for him because he's facing not a very pleasant deck for him to to deal with. Certainly not, not because we are running Toad. Uh, he starts powering up the Sphere on the bench. Um, we will just keep powering up our... Mega Mute EX, attach another DCE, that's, right now that's more than a knockout on the Palkia if we would uh, put the Mega Mute EX in the active spot. Uh, for now, however, we will just have to hit for the Quaking Punch, we cannot retreat our Toad. Uh, we could in the next turn by attaching a Psychic Energy, and if we survive, I think I will do that. We might get hit for 120 damage. If my opponent attaches a Muscle Band to the Palkia, that will be a knockout on a Toad. For sure. But I don't think we will see that happen. What I would love to get in hand is a Psychic Energy. One more Psychic Energy. Then we could go for a damage change at some point with our Mega Mewtwo EX. If our Mega Mewtwo would get damaged. So will we see the knockout? Uh, if not, I'm gonna attach the Psychic Energy to the Toad if it stays alive. Retreat the Toad manually. Oh, he goes for a Aqua Turbo. Interesting choice there. Look at that, 8 energy in play for my opponent. Uh, oh, we get another Psychic Energy. Okay, I'm gonna go for the manual retreat. Pay the retreat cost. I think that's safe to do at this point in the game. We can get back these Psychic Energies, these two Psychic Energies, with our Mega Turbo. And we will go for the Knockout with the Psychic Infinity, hitting for a ton of damage right now. 250, that's enough to knock out a Wailord. Although, Wailord probably wouldn't have any energy attached if we were facing it. You don't typically see an attacking Wailord. And this might be game here. Oh, never mind, my opponent benches another Pokemon, Articuno. Which I don't think it can get a KO on our Mega Mute EX. We will get hit for an Ice Ball from the Celio. And there is a Fighting Fury Belt on the Articuno. And that's no biggie for us. Um, we knock it out regardless with our Psychic Infinity. Seeing as though how many energy we will have attached to it uh, pretty soon. Uh, how many hit points does this Celio have? 90. Ah, it could be nice to go for a damage change just for the lulls. Uh, we can actually since we have the Mega Turbo. Uh, let's see, look at that. We have so many energy on the Mega Mute EX. I'm gonna... I'm actually just gonna... Go with the Psychic Infinity for now. Oh, let's damage change just because we can. Just because it's funny. Uh, get rid of our damage onto our Mega Mute EX. And if our opponent attacks us in the next turn, we will use damage change again. Go for the knockout that way. Uh, at least we have seen damage change in action if we... if we, really, Because uh, we might actually lose the next round, you never know. And then we might not see it in action. And uh, my opponent does decide to attack us, so this will be a knockout. Uh, right now, I'm not gonna attach any more to the Mewtwo EX in the active spots. I'm gonna bench, uh, I'm gonna power up the benched Mewtwo. And uh, we will damage change for the knockout. I'm not sure if my opponent gets to draw into. Oh, what happened there? Why did the damage change not work? That has me curious. Let's take a look. Switch all damage counters. Oh yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, I was confused here. I forgot. I kind of actually basically forgot how damage change worked. Uh, since we swapped damage counters, it did work. But the CD had 60 on him, and we had 60 on us, so we just swapped uh, for no effect. Uh, so let's use damage change one more time here. Maybe not. Let's just go for the knockout. We've had enough. Yeah, come. <laughs> You probably facepalm big time there. Um, it's actually the first time uh, I've used. I've been. I've used. I'm. Um, it's the first time I'm using this deck in uh, quite a while here. Uh, I put it together two weeks ago. Played around it with uh, quite a bit then, but ever since I haven't really been playing around with the deck anymore. So I kind of forgot there how damage change uh, worked. 
Hopefully you didn't face palm too badly. We will go for the knockout here. Uh, we've toyed around enough with our opponent. Hitting for 280 damage. He tried to stall us there by putting us to sleep, but it didn't work. And luckily it didn't work since the game was dragging out a little bit. And it looks like the other people were waiting for us anyways. Because the next round of the tournament is about to begin in 60 seconds. Let's take a quick look at the stats. Damage dealt 960 versus 200 from my opponent. Mega Mewtwo EX MVP against Celio. That's one of these stats that you rarely see. Um, at least I've never seen uh, Celio as the MVP. Uh, and what else is notable about these stats? Uh, nothing much really. So we'll have a look and uh, see who our next opponent will be. It's gonna be Dade. Dade managed to win against Fifka XD. I'm guessing that's an emoticon there, a uh, smiley face. And uh, Arthron36 is gonna face Dark Shadow 91199. So hopefully we can win against Dade and face Arthron or Dark Shadow in the finals for the three booster packs, two breakpoints, and one random pack. Dade is playing a Water and a Psychic deck. I hope the Water is not a Regice. We do get to start off first and I'm actually gonna opt to start off first. Set up just like we did in the last game. Uh, oh, we start off with a Toad and three VS Seekers in hand. Three, <laughs> three VS Seekers. Come on now. What is it? <coughs> What is it today with having to discard VS Seekers so early on in the game? Watch us top deck another one. Oh, and there is... Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And now we are really going to be facing a Greninja break deck. Oh, I cannot believe it. So, we'll have even more trouble using our Arhex Maniac now. We can only use it twice at most. Um, and we get a terrible, terrible hand here. Let's attach a Spirit Link to the Mewtwo and we will end our turn I think. We'll put down another Mewtwo and then end our turn. Uh, there's nothing much else we can do. We'll probably go for the Judge in the next turn. I think that's our best bet. Find the DCE for the Toad. And my opponent puts down the Suicone. He's going to up to power up the Suicone instead of the Froakies. So again, it's a little bit of a different Greninja break deck, it seems. Um, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks. Oh, okay, so I think that means we cannot use the damage change uh, if we are facing the Suicune. We are going to switch into the Mewtwo on our bench here. Start knocking out the Froakies with our Shatter Shot. We are hitting for 60 right now because we have two energy attached. Then we're gonna judge, uh, hopefully find a better hand and we get our last VS Seeker here. That is definitely uh, not good. We get another switch as well so we could switch back into the Toad if we really want to. And there it is, the first knockout of the game. Can we maybe get a Mega Mewtwo EX? I, I'd love to get a Mega Mewtwo EX so we can deal with that Suicune uh, a little bit easier. Knock it out in one hit. Uh, for now, we are looking good, even though our hand is terrible. I'll probably attach a DCE to the Toad or the Mewtwo EX on the bench. And my opponent concedes the match. I cannot believe it. Uh, wow, she basically gave us the win there. Yeah, I, I cannot believe. Why Why would she concede? She must have had a terrible hand. We are in the semi semi-finals here, so you'd expect your opponent to at least try. Yeah at least try to win but no we just got to concede and I guess I'll take it um, guessing my opponent or the other players have not finished yet yeah the timer seems to be bugged as well <laughs> it says zero seconds left so I guess I'll be right back uh, when the finalist uh, is known wow those were two very quick matches here from ourselves and from our opponent uh, it's barely a minute gone since I since I stopped recording and the other two have already finished so uh, I'm kinda kinda intrigued as to what my opponent might be playing that made the other match um, to be finished so quickly 
or that caused the other match to be finished so quickly. Uh, Arthurin is going to go first, uh, won the coin flip against us. We get... Uh, what is up today with getting so many of the same cards? I uh, really have no clue. Oh my gosh, it's Garchomp. Oh no. Uh, we need to get our Toad going. Toad is a good counter against Garchomp. Uh, we do not get our Toad. We instead uh, start off with the Shaman. At least we have a switch and a DCE to start item locking our opponent so he cannot use rare candies. So we are going to go for a Ultra Ball, get out our Toad, maybe a Hoopa, Hoopa for Toad and Mewtwo, and switch into the Toad, attach a DCE and hopefully find a Muscle Band from the Trainer's Mail. And that would be ideal. Uh, sorry there, I had to clean my nose since, um, oh we top deck the Hoopa. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of a cold. We'll put down the Hoopa, it's a little bit risky, it's an easy target for my opponent. And we'll get out a Toad and a Mewtwo. There's no need to get out a Shaman really at this point. Uh, since the Shaman is a very, very easy target for my opponent to knock out. So we'll put down the Toad, we'll put down the Mewtwo, and then we will switch into the Toad. Uh, that way my opponent cannot use Rare Candies, nor can he attach Focus Sashes, giving us an easier time at dealing with these Gibbles. Then we'll take a look at the Trainer's Mail. There is a Hex Maniac. I think I'll actually use that Hex Maniac. Wait, maybe not. My opponent didn't play Colorless Typing in his deck, so... Maybe Hexamaniac is not that useful. I'm gonna get a Lysander out. And I'm gonna Sycamore uh, discard the Lysander so we have access to it uh, with our VS Seekers. Uh, fortunately, I have to discard one more VS Seeker uh, or at least one that one VS Seeker with our Sycamore. Uh, can we maybe get a Muscle Band or a Spirit Link? We get a, a Spirit Link and a Skyla. I'm kind of tempted to go for the Skyla, get that Muscle Band out, just so we can get some quick, more easy knockouts. And I think I will go for the Skyla actually, for the next turn. For now, we are going to Quaking Punch, item lock our opponents. So it's been a lot of Quaking Punching here today. Uh, that's why the Toad is uh, a great partner for Mewtwo, because Toad by itself is a great attacker as well. Uh, can pull off many matchups by it by itself, and then Mega Mewtwo can come in to hit hard. Oh, kind of regret now discarding that Lysander and not keeping it in hand, so we could Lysander out the Gabite. Mm. Yeah, I kind of regret that now. Let's see, we shall start powering up the Mewtwo EX on the bench. And then we are going to go for a Muscle Band. We should be able to stay alive at least one more turn with our Toad. Where is our Muscle Band? Do we have our Muscle Band? I don't think we have our Muscle Band in deck. Nope, it doesn't seem like it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That's for sure a shame. So what I'm actually going to get out then is, I'm going to get out a Spirit Link, or maybe a Sycamore. No, I'm going to get out a Spirit Link, so we can uh, at least Mega Evolve. And we might have to go with the Shaman then in the next turn, there's no need to go with the Shaman right now. Yeah, okay, so let's go for the Knockouts with the Quaking Punch. Take the first prize of the game. Hopefully get our muscle band from the prizes here. <laughs> wow. Wow, just wow. There's no other words for that. And there is the Garchomp, so my opponent did manage to get out that Garchomp. And the teammates is going to find a probably a strong energy. So that's pretty lucky there for my opponent from his opening hand that he had all those cards there that he was able to evolve. So now I do really regret not having that Lysander anymore, so we could have already put some damage on the Garchomp. It's probably going to get a energy and a Gibble. Uh, there is a strong energy. Do we see another basic Pokemon? He, my opponent does need another basic Pokemon. Um, this card's another energy. So if he uses... Uh, he does not put down another basic Pokemon. That's very interesting. 
that could be very painful for my opponent in the next turn. We might actually get a knock out here and win the game. We just need an energy on our Mega Mewtwo. Uh, and I think I'm going to attempt to do that. I'm going to get out a Shaman, discard a Mega Mewtwo EX, and this Super Rod. I don't think we'll need the Super Rod. This can be game here, we just need one energy. And hopefully we can get it with the Shaman. Uh, so we'll switch into the Mega Mewtwo. And look for the energy. We'll counter the Stadium so we can draw into an extra card. And then play down the Shaman here. And see if we can find the one energy that we need. And there is a DCE. That's game. Uh, yeah, if I, I believe that's game actually. Yeah, my opponent doesn't have a Muscle Band. He couldn't attach it. So we are going to take the tournament win. With Mega Mewtwo EX, look at that. My opponent should have gotten a basic with that teammate. I think that was a mistake for sure. Victory for us in another really short game. Um, yeah, I don't know why the games are so short today. Uh, I, I cannot explain it. We did face two Greninja break decks that didn't really turn out to be Greninja break decks, so that could partially explain it, but the Garchomp definitely could have been a very threatening matchup if we uh, wouldn't have managed to get out to get that item lock going. Nonetheless, my opponent managed to get a Garchomp going as well and failed to bench enough Pokemon, so we could just take the knockout. With our Mega Mewtwo EX and Mega Mewtwo EX MVP, as it should be, as he is the main attacker of this deck, or is intended to be the main attacker of this deck. Let's take a look at our tournament prizes. Hopefully, I can get the correct tournament prizes because yesterday I didn't. A flash fire pack, that's not the most useful pack to get there, but we do have the two breakpoint packs and a golden trophy. Golden trophy number numero 17. And that's gonna be it for today's episode, I believe. Um, if you wanna see uh, some more Mewtwo variants, or if you wanna see this exact deck in some more matchups, just comment down below like JNN did. Uh, I believe that was his name, because uh, it's so hard to remember uh, names um, names like that. Just comment down below and you you might see me playing some more Mewtwo, uh, this deck or another deck. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed uh, the supreme power of Mega Mewtwo X and Size Method. And subscribe to my channel for more competitive, silly and fun deck ideas. And I'll be seeing you next time. Carp, carp, carp. Carp, 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 carp,